So, um, in the new Peter Pan film with Vin Diesel, you have street urchins, because not all of them were going around stealing people's pocket money and sneaking into their upper story windows. No, that's for extra money, because they're still bad off and people are still assholes. But they would go around, you know, obviously through all the factory places with all the dangerous machinery, like giant presses that are pressing things and then sideways into some sort of mold and then pulling back and like jump over, you know, like the, the table that it's on while it's cooling, you know, with like a cloth on their hand as it like steams because they like plunged into a water bucket outside before doing so. They like have the courses memorized so then occasionally they get gruesomely mangled because the factory changes or something and they're too stupid to update to it or be worn. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's like more of what was happening. They would not get out of the factories, and then occasionally yeah. people would claim that uh, they got. This is Assassin's Creed, though. That's that game. That they occasionally they try to enslave people, not in the middle of the city. Come on, but anyways, <laughs> this that's not part of the story. No. So uh, he because they enslave everybody. They enslave entire families. That's how England is. Yeah. That's how landholders are in England. So Yeah, but you gotta remember that, like, you are correct. Like, why wouldn't they just be so nuts that they just kidnap families and say they're just in their extensive secret basements, well, they you know, manufacturing? African families. Yeah, yeah. So that's just what they do. And then there's, like, actual squads of England people was that the have last to. place where slavery ended. You know, the beaters in England? Those are people with clubs that go around beating all the slavers? Yeah, man. <laughs> it's good times. Good old cricket wicket, you know? So anyways, you know, you have like a kid who does that, he like jumps through a yeah. giant press in a warehouse, then there's another like conveyor belt, and he slides underneath it yeah. where like oil spilled as like sparks shower, you know, the, you know, non like oil that doesn't light very easily, yeah. you know. So it's like caked on, so he slides under it as it like sparks shower, his little baker boy hat, as he like sprints through, as people scream at him, and they're like, he's fucking crazy, you know, at the beginning of the movie camera like pans down to the warehouse entrance as it's open as he plunges his fist into the water and does that. Yeah. And then the last time he like grabs a hook that's hanging, you know, that some guy left that he like detached some crates from, you yeah. know, and, like, swings out the other open doors and like lands on the street in a roll and then like takes off down by the wharf with all yeah. the boats on the side all, you know, bobbing in the water. Yeah, then you gotta have uh, different heights of, um, you know, piers where they have different heights of like wood off to the side like holding up the pier the big round pieces so then he like runs up the different pier pieces and it gets way up high as they go up higher and higher and like rolls up on top of like the boat dock office you know and then he's like running across the uh the boats like across the uh tops of the boats like because he like rides the um the moving um thing that puts things on and off the ships, you know, Jib, <coughs> over to a ship, and then he's, like, you know, running across the sail as he hops off of it as it's up high still, and then, like, jumps off of it and, like, you know, dives down to the water and, like, pops up, you know, next to, like, a little, uh, skiff boat. I don't know. I don't even know where I'm going with this. But the point here is we need a scene in the movie where, like, you know, yeah, there's, like, a big commotion of, like, everybody beating up, you know, slavers on one side of the city. So then the hobos are using that as a chance to mess with children on the other side of the city. So then, like, you know, the hobos are, like, chasing, you know, him through dangerous... Factory conditions? They yeah. They mauled by everything. Inside, yeah. And the factory workers get angry because they messed up their job and are beating them to death. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I like it. <laughs> you got those crambit hook knives because Eamon, he didn't know where he was going with it. So, like, one of the hobos that's extra, you know, angry and butthurt, you know, because he has, like, gold on him that he was transporting, like, a gold coin across the city to mean, that means something to somebody else. Because they're not told what they're delivering. And he just wants gold because he saw it given to him. So the hobos are chasing him and other kids because they have different things that are valuable that time because there's big celebrations and messages and money yeah. going around. So they all think they all mostly have money, you know, all the different orphans. Cause, and they're all being paid huge amounts to move, you know, different funds and stuff because it's like a big trade day at the docks too. So there's that people everywhere, they're all excited, they're moving crates from foreign lands, they got Indian spices, they got black tea, they got all that crap that British people, you know, they, they shake around for, you know, on the docks, they all, 
you know, they, they need their, you know, they need their poppy sap, their Afghan poppy sap, you know, they need their opium real bad, they're shaking, you know. Yeah. He's like jumping past them and through them and stuff, you know? Yeah, exactly. And he like gets up on the boat dock and there's uh, two guys like, you know, lowering a, a, a crate, you know, like trying to push it off. And he, he reaches into each of either of their sashes from behind and pulls out those, uh, uh, those curved crescent knives, those crambits for, yeah. for cutting lines. Yeah. They and also for, used for farming in some countries for certain things. Yeah. And then, you know, the hobo climbs up all covered in water and, like, some seaweed hanging on him. And he so, like, tries to attack him, you know. And then he all goes, like, Hoo! and jumps sideways and slashes him in one side of his cheek and then slashes him in his leg the other, you know, as he, like, falls to the ground, you know, like... Because, like, what he does is he, like, hooks him in the, in the, the cheekbone and flips around because he's so, light behind him, using his entire face, you know, as he lands yeah. behind him and cuts his, you know tendon in his Achilles so he goes down then you know he, t he still tries to turn around so he, he pushes off of his knee and carambits him under the chin with the, the, the knife you know yeah well the point is there's the uh, super hobo that's chasing him as well and uh, he like uh, you know has his other little knife at his waist so like he pulls that out and cuts the hobo's hand off you know as he's like trying to climb up and follow him then he like, you know, the hobo he like thinks he's gonna bleed to death and runs off. But then he drops his karambits, and then the hobo like stabs the you know shaft of it into his stump, and swears revenge and becomes the Captain Hook, you know. <laughs> yeah, because the blade snapped off when it hit him under the chin, you know, when he he did a backflip off of him yeah. style, you know. Yeah. From Street Fighter, you know. Yeah. Like, Whoa, backward and lands and then runs off. Yeah. <laughs> we need an awesome 12 year old. You gotta cast the 12 year old. Yeah. So like, uh, the kid, you know, who does all that stuff, I guess at the beginning of the movie, he's delivering a message to somebody who's supposed to be in the rowboat, but then the person in the rowboat's been, you know, killed and replaced by the hobo. So that, then it makes sense, you know, why he's going that fast to that location, I guess. Just to clear that up.